Good morning, everyone. I am so excited um, to be introducing Meredith Maxwell and Mac Trace to you all this beautiful Saturday morning. They're going to be sharing Census 101 for educators and administrators. And in this session, participants will review utilizing various census data tools to identify trends and character characteristics of school-aged children for demographics and planning purposes. Welcome everyone and thank you Meredith and Mac Trace for joining us this morning. All right we're good to go. Awesome. All right well once again thank you for inviting us uh, to conduct uh, today's census uh, 101 training. I'm Meredith Maxwell. I am a data dissemination specialist with the United States Census Bureau and I'm joined by my one of my favorite colleagues Mac Trace. Um, before we begin, I uh, just wanted to uh, welcome you or let you know that we welcome questions uh, during this training. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, your, your feedback is very important. And um, we also have the chat, which is being monitored. Um, just keep in mind, um, we'll stretch this presentation pretty close to the hour. So um, we just want to make sure that uh, if you do have questions that um, you, you use one of those uh, two methods uh, to ask. Um, I will be sharing a survey link at the end of this. Uh, please take the time to respond as the survey does help us to provide better training in the future. Um, and we'll also provide a copy. I believe this is also being recorded. Um, so you will have access to this presentation at a later date. Um, just an FYI, I will be turning off my screen, uh, off my camera, uh, just to preserve bandwidth, just to make sure there's no hiccups in the presentation. Uh, so, so bear with us. Okay, now here's a little bit about us. Um, I'll start. Uh, I've been with the Bureau on and off uh, since about 2008 uh, in various roles and capacities. Uh, I, as a DDS, I currently uh, cover the state of Nevada as well as a few counties in California. Um, this is a, a never ending journey. Uh, we've been doing this data thing since 1790. So. It's a lot to learn, a lot, uh, lot to train people on. So it's my pleasure to be here with you today and I hope you get a lot of, out of today's uh, presentation. Mac. Great, thanks Meredith. Uh, good morning to everyone as well. Uh, so I also joined the Bureau in late 2018 to be part of the Community Partnership Engagement Program. So uh, I helped educate and motivate diverse communities to respond to the 2020 census. But prior to that, um, I also had a short stint with the California Labor Commissioner's Office and had um, engage, I was engaged in the private sector uh, in fields of outreach and marketing. So I'm also a data dissemination specialist and conduct trainings and workshops and I cover uh, most of the counties in California. Back to you, Meredith. Thank you. All right. Uh, this slide just basically highlights our DDTB, uh, or what we call Data Dissemination and Training Branch, uh, which offers wonderful opportunities uh, to continue your learning experience. With this site, you can learn how to access and use uh, Census Bureau data your way through our how-to data gems, videos, in-depth courses, webinars, and tutorials. Census Academy allows you to search by topic, which allows you to learn at your own pace. In addition to how-to videos, um, the webinars offer a more comprehensive look into our various data tools and surveys. Either way, we're here to help and we look forward to a continued relationship. There are 13 principal federal statistical agencies identified by the Office of Management and Budget, otherwise known as OMB, and the United States Census Bureau is the largest. Um, you may best uh, know us uh, by the decennial census, which happens every 10 years. The last one being held in 2020, uh, but we actually conduct over 130 censuses, surveys each year, censuses and surveys, excuse me, each year on social, economic, demographic, and housing data. While most of our surveys are optional, we do have the mandatory or constitutional obligation to conduct the decennial census, the American Community Survey, and the economic census. The economic census, real quick, collects statistics about businesses and takes place every five years, in the years ending in two and seven. 
In fact, the economic census is underway and we are still seeking responses. If you know of someone whose business received the economic census questionnaire, please encourage them to respond. Their responses do make a difference. One of the primary reasons the census is involved with so many surveys is our relationships with outside agencies that work with census to collect data. Agencies like the US Department of Justice and the Department of Labor. By doing so, we are able to collect and source relative information for a variety of topics. Here you see the Census Bureau has several sources that provide information for children. The Decennial Census, the American Community Survey, the National Survey of Children's Health, et cetera. We have the American Housing Survey, a collaboration with the Department of Housing and Urban Development, otherwise known as HUD. The National uh, Household Educational Survey is sourced with the assistance of the Department of Education. The Current Population Survey and the Census of Juveniles in Residential Placement is a collaboration with the U.S. Department of Labor and the U.S. Department of Justice, respectively. So we do have a variety of surveys for a variety of topics. Here's a little bit about our outline and our aim for today's training. We just wanna provide you with an incre increased awareness of the two main sources of these type of data, the decennial census and the American Community Survey. I'll be taking you through the different types of data sets. Actually, I won't, but Mac will be taking you through the different types of data sets you can generate from each. Um, second is just to equip you with some of the online tools available to access these data sets with the eventual goal to assist you in your online analysis and planning. Now, the Decennial Census and the American Community Survey, or short ACS. But before that, just wanna make sure we go over the basics of the Decennial Census. As I aforementioned, it takes place every 10 years. The Bureau is constitutionally mandated by Article 1, Section 2 to count every person living in the US, wherever they may live or be during Census Day. The decennial census has significant political and financial implications as the official counts determine how trillions of federal funding is distributed to various communities across the nation and the official counts of the population help inform congressional representation. For example, in fiscal year 2021, more than 2.8 trillion in federal funds were distributed to states, communities, tribal governments, and other recipients using Census Bureau data in whole or in part. The Census Bureau doesn't give out money but our statistics do help inform those who do. Here's a, a list of our 2020 census data, data product releases. Um, I have highlighted here, uh, September, 2023, the detailed demographic and housing char characteristics file A, uh, which is set to release later this month on the 21st. Um, again, it's just a summary. And the data set, uh, yeah, officially the 21st, uh, the detailed DHC-A provides population counts and sex by age statistics for approximately 1,500 detailed race and ethnic groups and detailed American Indian and Alaskan Native tribes and villages. A webinar discussing the upcoming release is set for next week, September 13th. Here's a list of the content collected by the ACS, which can be grouped into four main types of characteristics, which are social, demographic, economic, and housing. The social characteristics include topics like education, marital status, fertility, veterans, disability status, and place of birth. The ACS also collects the basic demographic characteristics collected on the decennial census, which are the items in red. You can see those here, age, sex, race, Hispanic origin, and tenure. Economic characteristics include topics like employment status, income, commuting to work, occupation, industry, and health insurance. And lastly, the housing characteristics, which include tenure, information about the occupancy, occupancy and the structure itself, which includes home value and housing costs. Such housing costs include mortgages, taxes and insurance, utilities, plumbing, kitchen facilities, and others.
The next data source we'll be going through is called the American Community Survey, which is a continuation from the prior, prior slide where we highlighted the various categories. Now the ACS is an ongoing survey, which sends out mailings to approximately 3.5 million addresses annually, or about 295,000 addresses each month. The ACS collects and produces detailed population and housing estimates, as well as social, economic, and housing and demographic characteristics. We can't overstate that because it's a lot of data and we wanna make sure that you guys understand those various categories. It covers over 40 plus topics that supports many federal government uses. Now, here's a table uh, for the types of ACS data releases. The ACS creates what we call period estimates, which means they represent the characteristics of the population and housing over a specific period. These are known as one-year and five-year estimates. The one-year estimates collect 12 months of data, whereas the five-year estimates collect a total of 60 months. The one-year estimates provide you with data of populations of 65,000 or more, and the one-year supplemental estimates, including areas with populations of 20K or more. While the five-year estimates provide data for areas with less than 20,000, all geographic levels get the five-year which is illustrated by these check marks here. So this is a nice illustration on who gets what and why. So just remember that it's based on population. So the larger your population, the more detailed uh, uh, data you receive. Now, another important element for you to be aware of is census geography. This diagram shows you the hierarchy of the census and how the geography works. The census block, excuse me, is a small area, similar to a square block in your neighborhood, which in turn makes up a block group. So if you're looking at the diagram, we're going from right to left, right? So we have the block, which nests within the block group, and then the block group nests within the census tract. And that census tract in turn nests within the county. And here we have a county within the state of California, for example, and then we have the state of California that nests within the nation. So when you're utilizing our data tools, which Mac will demonstrate later, this is how you can search for a particular characteristic within a geography based on these groups here. As a summary chart, this provides you the differences between the ACS and the decennial census. The ACS estimates are based on a sample of the population, which ends up being over 3.5 million housing units addresses each year. Whereas the decennial census is based on the official count of the entire population. As to what we collect, the ACS collects information, detailed social, economic, housing, and demographic characteristics. There are those four characteristics again. Whereas the decennial census just collects basic demographics via the short form. And it gives you details like age, or excuse me, it collects details such as age, sex, race, Hispanic origin, household, relationship, and housing tenure. The ACS produces population and housing characteristics, whereas the census produces population and housing totals. The ACS occurs annually, while the decennial census happens every 10 years and reflect a point in time which is census day, typically April 1st. This is where I'm going to pass it over to my counterpart, Mac, and she's going to work on the live demos. All yours, Mac. Thank you so much, Meredith. So let me go ahead and switch over. Uh, I think you have to hit stop first, Meredith, and then I can. Yes, I, I did hit the stop share. Okay, let me do that again. Did that work? I, uh, yes, I can see your screen. Okay, great. Uh, so now we will move on into exploring the data tools and resources within our site, census.gov. 
So you may open up your own browser to follow along. The preferred option is Chrome, but you can always utilize Firefox or Edge depending on your preference. Right, so this slide just illustrates for you a few of our ever evolving data tools for you to use free of charge. And it's all accessible through our site, uh, census.gov. While it may seem overwhelming, we have a plethora of options to assist you with understanding which data tools to use, whether it's through uh, data dissemination specialists like us or through your own experience and research. Another option is the quick cheat sheet uh, via the link on the slide that you see below here. Um, and that will give you which data, data table or tool should I use as a reference. But for today's purpose, we'll be focusing on two things, uh, data.census.gov and statistics in schools resource called State Facts. So let us begin with the first one. So you may be familiar with statistics in school. This program is a um, is the state's facts for student is part of statistics in schools program, and is a data access tool, um, which can help students learn about their state as they collect, organize, and analyze map and graphs uh, on a variety of information. It is a great opportunity for them to examine data about kids their age, as well as a variety of other facts um, selected to appeal to your young students. So to access this tool, all you need to go, do is go to our site and let me do that right now um, and demonstrate for you. So as I mentioned, uh, you can type into your web browser census.gov and in order to access this particular state facts for student uh, tool, all you have to do is just um, hover over educators. Uh, there's a tab here on top that says educators. And once you click on that, um, that should lead you to the landing page of statistics in schools. And once we have this loading up, it's very slow. But uh, once you do have it loaded up, all you need to do is scroll down to find um, that particular app tool, which would be right here. So you can click on explore state facts. And once you do that, um, it should open up to the tool state facts. So what we'll do now is let's check on the activities that can be accessed with this tool. So given this tool, you'll be able to access changes in population, information about children, um, changes in how people get to work and other information. So you can start by just clicking on this drop down menu right here uh, on the search bar. And if you wanted to check your state facts, you can scroll down to Nevada. And once you do click on the go button here, to navigate to the tables. It will automatically give you some of the state facts. As I mentioned, it will give you information on the changes in population, information about kids. So the difference between the 2020 census and uh, 2021 information uh, from the American Community Survey. And then in terms of how people get to work, Again, uh, comparison between the 2010 census, and then it's just giving you information uh, gathered from the ACS uh, 2021. You even have information about household computer use. So just with this given tool, you're able to access a plethora of information um, for the state of Nevada. Okay, let's switch back to our uh, presentation right here and go to the next tool that I will be demonstrating. So the next tool is called data.census.gov uh, or DCG. 
This is a platform to access data and digital content from the U.S. Census Bureau. DCG is a relatively new tool and the platform is continuously being updated and the information available is also continu continuously integrated. So this chart just provides you with a brief uh, synopsis of the available data that we have. Uh, as you can see, it does go as far back as 2000 and the most recent um, data set that we have is the 2021. Uh, obviously, this is not the entire list, uh, but you can always go to the frequently asked uh, question of data.census.gov to find out uh, the entire list. So using this tool or using data.census.gov, you can either do a single search or an advanced search option. The single search allows you to type in keywords um, using either, you know, keying in either a topic, geography, or year, or it could be a combination of these words. And then for the advanced search, you have the ability to filter your option. Um, excuse me. Um, and you, could, you, you will be able to have the ability to filter options so your search is more precise. So with the advanced search, uh, it allows you to filter based on either uh, codes or codes, geography, topics, surveys, or years, or even a combination of these filters. So we will go ahead and do um, our first demonstration of how you can access data.census.gov. What we will do for first is do a single search. So what we want to do is to find school enrollment for grades 9 to 12 for the state of Nevada. So to accomplish this, we will simply type in uh, our keywords, which is right now school enrollment Nevada. And that should lead us to the two filters, school enrollment and Nevada, as you will see once we do the demonstration. And we will be accessing the American Community Survey Table S1401 school enrollment um, data set. So again, we'll go into our site um, and you do have the option of getting into our census site, which is census.gov. We'll go back to the landing page and um, what we need to do or how to access this is you can just go to hover on data tables and data, data and maps. And within here, you will see uh, the option of going to data tools and apps. So if you click on that particular item, that should lead you to a list of all the data tools and apps that we have available. You can also um, type it in directly into your web browser, which I will do right now. What you can do is just put data.census.gov. It already prompted me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see, we landed into our uh, landing page for DCG. So within here, we'll go ahead and type in our search word that we already mentioned earlier, which is school enrollment. School um, enrollment. And then Nevada, right? Once we have those keywords in, all we have to do is click on the search icon. And that should lead us directly to uh, our table. And as you can see, it prompted us right away to table S1401, which is school enrollment. So you will see here on the left panel, the two filters based on our search word. And it gives us other additional uh, data table set that you can explore on your own. You could either go through uh, the American Community Survey, which is viewing this result. You have the option of also viewing the profile of Nevada, uh, but for purposes of our demonstration, I'll go ahead and click into the S1401 table, which is school enrollment. Um, so that should give you or open up to that particular table. Um, so what we can do to view a bit more of our table is we will minimize some of these screens or panels by clicking on the chevrons. And that should give you a better view of the data table set. So what 
you can see right here uh, on the first column, it already provides you with the different characteristics specific to school enrollment, whether you're interested on different uh, types of population age groups. And on the right-hand panel here, if you scroll to the right, it will give you information on the uh, estimate together with the margin of error and the percent. Um, you do have the option also of taking out the margin of error if you wanted to view just the estimate and the percent by clicking on the margin of error icon. Uh, and so that clears up that portion. And so you can easily compare just the estimate uh, together with the percentage. So you will see it provides you with both in public school as well as private school uh, information. So it's really a great uh, set of data table for you to look at school enrollment for the state. Right now, it is showing you the one-year estimate uh, subject tables, but you do have the option of going back in time if you wanted to by clicking on the um, plus icon right here on the first um, label for S1401. So once you do that, uh, you do have the option of going back all the way back to 2010, and it depends on what your estimate you want whether it's the five-year or the one-year estimate, you do have that option. So for instance, if you wanted a five-year estimate, you can just click on um, 2021 ACS five-year estimate and your table set or data table will change to that particular data set. So you do have the option also of either um, downloading the file through Excel sheet, CSV or zip, as you can see on the labels here on the ribbon on the top of your screen. So once you do click on those icons, uh, you'll be able to download it. So let me just minimize again a bit more so we will see uh, the labels on top. You do also have the option of sharing the file. Um, you can click on the share icon and that should give you the option of sharing either through email or social media and even copying the link um, and saving it or putting it in your email. So that just gives you an idea of uh, the single search. So for next, we will go back and uh, share with you our next demonstration for the um, advanced search. All right, so for our advanced search demo, what we will do is to try to find school enrollment uh, by city specifically for Hispanic, Latino, and Asian alone populations for the state of Nevada. And for this time around, we will focus on the five-year estimates. Um, so as you can see, we'll be using the advanced search um, option. And once we go into our filter, we'll choose geography and topics. And the filters we will be eventually uh, get will be um, going into school enrollment and race for the topic and we will be doing uh, instead of county we'll be doing the cities and we will be accessing uh, the data table set b140071 and 4007d going back to our um, tool what we can do is uh, go and click on our uh, census logo, which clears up all of our search uh, originally and just goes back to uh, the landing page. Um, so once we are there, we can go ahead and click on advanced search. And that should prompt you to the uh, different filters available for you uh, once you do your search. So. Right now, we have the search filters here on the left panel. You can minimize or uh, expand this by just clicking on uh, the particular topics uh, of the filter. So as I mentioned, we wanted to do just first uh, start with the geography. Uh, so we said that we will try to look for the cities, the different cities within Nevada. Cities actually fall within the place in terms of geography for the census. So we will be clicking on place. Once you do that, it will prompt you to what state you wanted to check. Um, as you can see here, it prompted you for the different states, but uh, what you can do is scroll down to look for Nevada, but you can always type in Nevada 
in within the search bar and it should prompt you for the state that you're looking for. So we'll go ahead and click Nevada. Once you're there, it will show you all the places or unincorporated and incorporated cities within Nevada. But what we wanted to do is just um, go ahead and click on all places. You can pick and choose, but you do what we will do for this demonstration is go with all places within Nevada. And that is what we will do. Uh, that should go into, once you click onto the all places, it should add that into your filter. All right, so the next filter that we will choose uh, after geography, we'll minimize this by clicking on the chevron. Um, we will be going into the topics. So we'll choose topics. Once you click on topics, it will expand. What we wanted to do is go into the topic of education. So we'll go ahead and click on education. Uh, and what we're interested in, it's prompted us into different choices. What we want to do is to look into school enrollment and click on school enrollment. So we've chosen school enrollment and that should be added into our filter. So now we have two filters here. One is the geography and the first topic, which is school enrollment. So now we will go into our next topic. We're interested in race and ethnicity. And so we'll minimize this um, topic by clicking on the chevron. And um, sorry, we'll go back to race and ethnicity my, yeah, we'll go back to race and ethnicity on the topics, and it should be here at the bottom of the list. Once you click on that particular item, it should prompt you to the different uh, topics within race and ethnicity. So we're interested in race and ethnicity right here, and this is the box that we will check, and that will be added into our topic or filter. So. Now we have all three topic, uh, all three filters filled out with our geography and the two topics that we've chosen. And once we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and click uh, on the search button right here on the bottom right hand corner of our screen. Once you do that, it should give you all the data tables related to our filters. It will not give you any other table that's not related to uh, the filters that you've pre-chosen. So we said that what we're interested in is uh, Hispanic as well as Asian alone population. So the first one that we see right here, right away, is the B14007D, which I mentioned earlier, which gives you the Asian alone school enrollment. And once you do click on that, um, and we will minimize our screen again by clicking on the chevron, this should give you uh, the data set specific to the different city school enrollment um, by grade within all the cities located in Nevada. So if we scroll to the right, it will give you all the other city uh, information uh, provided. So the other data table that we wanted to see was the Hispanic uh, enrollment, and that would be on the B40071 which should be here. If you scroll down, you will see here, it's B140071, which says Hispanic or Latino. So if you do click on that, it should give you information specific to that particular uh, race. Again, you do have the option of choosing your uh, product, whether it will be one year or five year. So if you click again on the plus icon, that should be, you should be able to view all of the data tables. So you, if you wanted, again, to go into the five-year estimate, you just click on five-year estimate and this changes. All right, so we will go back again. We'll have one more demonstration for you. Um, the last one for our advanced search demo, we will be finding the poverty status by household type and by educational attainment of households for specifically for Clark and Washoe counties. So we'll be using two filters again, which is the geography and topics, and we'll be accessing table B17018, which provides you detailed information on economic and housing characteristics. 
All right, so we'll go back to our site. Again, uh, to clear up your filters, we can just go ahead and click on the census logo and we'll just you know, go back to our landing page uh, and we'll start again with our advanced search, by hitting on advanced search and we'll begin by clicking on our uh, geography filter. And because we're looking for a specific county, we'll go into the county filter. So we'll click on that and uh, we'll again start with which state. So we'll go in, in Nevada. We'll go ahead and choose Nevada as our state. And that should give you a list of all of the counties. Um, since we're interested in Clark, so we'll go ahead and click on Clark. And then the last one being Washoe right here at the bottom, we'll click on that. And now we see we have the two counties we are interested in. So next, what we will do is to minimize our geography filter and go into our topics. For this time around, what we will do is to go into income since we're interested in income and poverty. We'll go ahead and click on income and poverty. And we will be clicking on poverty and click on the item for poverty. And that should bring up our filter on poverty. And then for our next filter, um, because we wanted educational attainment, so we will go into our uh, educational uh, topics. And then we'll go ahead and click on education attainment. So that should give us the two, the geography and then the two topic filters that we have. So once we have those on our filter box and we'll go ahead and click search. And as you can see, it already gives you uh, the first or the second table, uh, which is B, B17018, poverty status for the past 12 months by educational attainment. Um, of the householder. So we'll go ahead and click on that particular data table set. And again, we'll minimize by clicking on the chevrons right here on top. Um, so what you can see right here is that you do have uh, information on poverty um, by educational attainment as well as the householder type. Um, so you will see whether they're married couple and then the education of payment. If you scroll down a bit more, there are more information that might be of interest for you. There would be a breakdown as well on male and female householder. And then um, right here would be the two counties that we've chosen, which is uh, Clark County and Washoe. It only gives you right now the estimate doesn't have the percentage, but it does give you the margin of error. Again, you have the option of taking out the margin of error. Um, so this is a really great data table set for you if you wanted to analyze um, information on poverty with regards to educational attainment. All right, with that, I'll hand it over to uh, I'll hand it over back to Meredith um, to go over the final slides unless there are questions on the chat. Um, Aaron, Thanks, I wanted Mark. to, yeah. Very good job. Um, if you want, so we don't have to change the screen back, if you want to just go to that screen, if you haven't unshared already, I can just talk about it. Okay, great. Excellent. As we mentioned in the beginning, um, this is our, uh, we have a plethora of resources. And this is an, an example of what we have. Um, this is our upcoming webinars. Um, we have Explore Foreign Born and Ancestry Population Data. That's coming up September 20, uh, 21st. 
Um, and we also have recorded webinars. So just in case you search our site and you see something of interest, it will eventually become recorded. Um, and we have one here that we did April 27th, uh, 2023. Uh, where are the kids? Explore data for children 18 years and under. Um, and we also have our data gems. I love the data gems. They're usually short five to, uh, yeah, five to 10 minute videos, how-to videos on various data tools and topics. Um, and you can get there census.gov forward slash data forward slash academy forward slash webinars uh, forward slash upcoming, right? Right down here on the screen. Um, and I think that's it on this page. Mac, you can go ahead and get to the next one. This is our contact information, just in case you wanna get in touch with us, our name, email and branch, and also our mobile phone numbers. Um, thank you uh, so much uh, for your attendance and uh, your participation. And that's all that we have.